Hello. Everyone was all right enjoying today so far. Um, firstly, I'd <laughs> I think I've got to congratulate Dom on his attire today. That shirt was absolutely incredible. I thought it was a one-off, and then I saw his pictures on the slide and shows he got full wardrobe of them. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed that talk. Um, I don't know how I'm going to follow it, to be honest. Um, I'm also very conscious that I'm the person keeping you from the after party, which is probably the reason why a lot of you are still hanging around. So hopefully what I will go through will be interesting enough to keep you all engaged for around 20, 25 minutes. I promise not to overrun as well and uh, stop you from getting to the party. So, to start off, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. My name's Owen. Uh, I'm the head of Bidder Media at a company called Pendragon. So we are a large automotive retail group in the UK. Um, and previously, we were at the international premises as well. Um, when I was asked to come here today to talk, uh, I thought, OK, what can I go, what can I go with? What topics? I thought, OK, look at new products. Do I look at uh, case studies that worked for us in the past? And I thought, well, you've probably got quite a lot of that from some of the other talks you've had here today. So I thought, OK. I've been lucky enough to have experience working the agency side and in-house, and I've managed teams, really good teams, and I have to say that because a lot of them are based on this front row or second row, <laughs> uh, some former team members as well. But I've been very lucky to work with some extremely talented people, um, and with that, I've come across challenges with businesses, whether it's the in-house business or a client that I previously worked with the agency side, when it comes to making paid media, online, adver uh, online advertising decisions, in terms of where that activity is managed. So I thought, okay, so I'm going to go through some of the sorts of challenges I, I see, uh, and hopefully give some of you who are marketing managers or business owners uh, some food for thought. So taking some consideration, some of the factors that affect uh, this big decision we make, where does it get managed? The idea is, is I'm not going to give you the answers today at all, um, and I'm not the person to do that. You guys are the people to do that. Every solution is different and bespoke to what your business needs. But hopefully it'll put you in a position where you don't make a costly uh, mistake and make that wrong choice, because it can be financially uh, quite damaging. So we'll start where well, anything starts, is what your objectives. You know, as a business manager or a marketing manager, you need to know what you want. So the amount of times I've been told, OK, I want to increase revenue. I want to acquire traffic to my website cheaper. I want my audience to engage with the content on my website better. I want to learn my CPA for lead gen. These are all absolutely reasonable requests. But they're not reasonable when you are tailoring it all to one campaign or a very small budget. The danger is you want it all. It's absolutely fine. But have the budget, have the campaign set to achieve it. So some of the things I look at with uh, my previous clients and also with my teams in-house now, we've got objectives. So first thing we want to know is it understood by all parties. You know, if you're a marketing manager, you know what you want to achieve. But does your third-party agency know what you want to achieve? You know, you've got to remember they have various different clients that they work with various different objectives, loads of different industries. You know, it's not as easy for them to understand what you want them to achieve. What does success look like? Focus. I've just talked about wanting it all. You, know, you can want it all, but each campaign should have a primary objective. And this is something I've drilled into my teams in agency and in-house. You know, every campaign should have a primary objective, one goal. You need to achieve one thing. And that campaign should be set up to achieve that one goal. Now, you can have secondary objectives. That's absolutely fine, but you must never set up a campaign to achieve a secondary objective at the expense of the primary. And finally, it goes that same, it needs to be achievable. Uh, and this probably more lends itself to agencies. You know, agencies are very frustrated when we speak to clients and they come to us and say, okay, I want to do this, this, and this by next year. You know, if you are a one-man band and you've got a small e-commerce site selling sheds, within 12 months, do not expect to be turning over the online revenue of B&Q. It's an extreme example, but you know, it highlights some of the, let's say, over-optimistic objectives that are set. If you don't answer yes to all of these, then you're pretty much set to fail. You might as well go and get your next door neighbor to run your campaigns for you because you will not achieve uh, success. OK, so you've got your objective set. You know, you've got um, your focus. You know what you want to achieve with your primary. It's definitely achievable. You know, and everyone understands what success looks like. So the most common question we'll get from any business is, OK, I've got X amount of money for management. I've got X amount of money for my ad spend. You know, where shall I invest my money? Where, should, where will I get more return? This brings into two points. So now I've broken that down to two. And unfortunately, despite the color of this, it isn't black and white. But this John Rohn qu uh, quote, which I quite like, and it isn't relevant for PPC because you, know, you can get more time PPC. Agency give them more money, in-house just recruit more people. But the point he's trying to make is time is extremely precious. And it is true. And if you follow that thought process, you would only build an in-house team. You will get more man hours or woman hours. You know, Don't want to don't end up like uh, Barry Adams downstairs and get himself into trouble. But, um, you can, time's extremely precious to you, and actually if you had this decision, then you would definitely go 
within our team. But an industry will also turn around and say, okay, well, you know, we believe we have the best people. We believe that we have the best technology available. So we think we can probably do more than your in-house team in a quarter, uh, quarter of the time. Quality of quantity. So what do you go for? Do you have time? Do you have quality? Now, it'd be really reckless of me to come and tell you that it was a matter of one or the other, because no, you can, of course, have both. You make smart choices as a marketing manager, you can definitely achieve both. So let's take this scenario, okay, you're a marketing manager, you've made that decision, you are going to build your in-house team because you've got more control, you know you're going to get more man or woman hours uh, working on your campaigns. Monday morning hits, your recruitment starts. You quickly find that talent is so, so hard to find. You know, we're in Leeds, we're a great city, with, there is probably more talent on average in Leeds than most places across the UK. Manchester, lots of friends here from Manchester, again, fair bit of talent in Manchester, London as well. But still, town's hard to find in them cities. Imagine if you, your business was in Cumbria or Somerset, Cornwall, Devon. You know, you're going to find it very, very hard to recruit. Really, really difficult. But if you hand over the keys to your agency, you know, you, you're confident they are going to have good people, experienced people, you know, they know exactly how to achieve your objectives. Okay, you change your mind. You don't want that in our team. I'm going to go with an agency. You know, you tell them what you want. The agency tells you how much time you're going to need. Shit. Agencies are really expensive, you know, they're not cheap. So you look at day rates, you look at how many man or woman hours you're going to get from an agency, it's really expensive, so you need to be careful in terms of what you're going to get back from the agency. Okay, let's return back. You've got already inherited a good paid media team, you know, so I said, well, fine, I don't need an agency, I've got my good team, you know, um, I, I haven't got to worry about any third party support, you know, they'll deliver exactly what I want. How vulnerable are you at the moment if your talent leaves? And I ask myself that question every day. I personally live in Mansfield, and the business I work in, we are in Nottinghamshire, which isn't necessarily a breeding ground for really top tech uh, talent. You know, so I'm very fortunate, again, I do have to say this, I, I work with some incredibly intelligent people, and we're very good at their jobs. But the thought that goes through my head every week is, what if one of them leaves? How do I replace them? It's very, very tough. Now, this is not an excuse for us to pay rise. But um, <laughs> um, are you actually in a position where you could actually recruit? We've already discussed it, it's really hard. Agencies don't have that problem. If you have a top account manager working on your account and they were to leave, it's the agency's responsibility to replace that person. Absolutely fine, you know, they have a wealth of people, you do not need to worry. But are you actually getting the best people working on your account? Probably, I don't know. Are you being told by your agency you are getting the best people? Agencies are like any business, they will have juniors, they'll have younger people who come in, who are uh, brand new to tech industries, you know, they're brand new to advertising, and they will make mistakes, that's natural, they will learn. But the fear is, no one really wants those junior members of staff working on their accounts in case they do make a mistake, and they learn on your account. You are paying a premium rate for an agency, you want premium talent working on your account. I will also add, uh, I play devil's advocate here as well. My own experience at age, so a little bit controversial because a couple of them are here actually. Um, age is but a number. And years of experience is only a number as well. Some of the best people I've worked with are junior members. They're really, really talented and they understand it. You understand the industry you're working. Some of the senior members I've worked with in the past, let's say they're stuck in the ways and they've made reckless decisions. So if you are told you are getting a junior member of staff working on your account, if you are going the agency route, you know, just keep in mind, be open minded as to what they can actually achieve. Okay, so we moved on to understanding your business. You know, it's absolutely no secret any agency team working on your campaigns, you know, won't know your business as well as you do. Who's that saying? Which does sound like a negative, and in some in some respects, it certainly is. You know, they don't understand the mechanics of your business. They don't necessarily understand your markets as, as well as uh, as well as you do. But this is a really, really big point I want to hammer home. External agencies usually, and I make the point usually, aren't influenced by internal politics. Um, internal teams will often find themselves being dragged left, right, and centre from different people. Who everyone's got an opinion on PPC or paid media on advertising, what you want to call it, um, and it can be detrimental to the performance of campaigns. An agency doesn't have to deal with that. And there's also the added benefit of agencies who work in various different industries, you know, different retail industries, they understand how businesses work, they understand different products on advertising uh, platforms better than you, you may do. You know, they can influence your decisions you're making. They're left alone, they're given the space to actually execute the strategy you've given to them from day one. You've planned it right, you've given them the objectives, they're, they're away working at it. 
a bit of a myth, this, uh, and I'm speaking from my own experience working at agency, is that agencies have the best ad tech. Um, it's not true that all agencies do use the best ad tech, but more often than not, if you do go with a reputable agency, a large agency, they will tend to use top ad tech. But you could ask yourself the question, you know, a lot of this ad tech is available to you guys, you know, your internal teams to purchase yourselves. Why not own it? Why not have it? Why not have a license? You don't necessarily need to go through an agency to use that ad tech. Again, so it's another question you've got to ask yourself. Is it worth me investing in ad tech or do I need to use an agency? But before all that, you need to analyze the campaigns you're running. The fees that come with top ad tech, will they financially benefit your business? Possibly, possibly not. If you find yourself that your bills for your ad tech is higher than what you're actually spending, you may have an issue. And then it leads into the land of confusion. I, love I, I didn't know how old the average age of this audience was. I was going to put a picture of Genesis, the band up there, but I thought, no, it may not wash, especially with the younger, younger group. So I put a nice picture of Maze on. But the point of this is, um, we live in a world of acronyms, weird terms, you know, a lot of people don't understand. We've got DSPs, SSPs, ad servers, DMPs, you know, it goes on and on and on and on. And what happens is, and I've seen it so many times, is people are feared into purchasing or agreeing into a, a, a product uh, that they may not be aware of, they don't know what it does, and they certainly don't know how much it costs. But they're, they're told and they think they need it. It's not true. You know, online advertising can be complex. But more often than not, it's overcomplicated by the people who work in this industry, you know. More often than not, we're here to produce media, present it in front of a target market that we think is going to be valuable to us, get them to a website and carry out an action that's valuable to us as a business. So when you're reviewing ad tech and seeing exactly what you need, you need to analyze certain parts of your practice. So we look at your targeting, you know. How advanced is your targeting? We have different media, run across different platforms as mentioned, and various different targeting methods that are available to us as advertisers to use. If you are just scratching the surface at the moment, you know, is there really a need to get a tech that's going to explore new markets for you, especially if it's that tactic is already working for you and achieving your objectives? Spend levels, I mentioned it already, you know, if your spend levels are relatively small, especially for the industry you work in, again, there's an argument that top ad tech and investing in that isn't necessarily a requirement. And then finally, you're covering the basics. You know, I've, in my agency experience, I was adopting clients from really, really prestigious paid media agencies, ones that you think that you're only going to get the best health, healthy accounts from them. But it wasn't the case. I was we're getting absolute trash coming through. And I thought to myself, OK, no matter who you go with, whether it's an agency and in-house, you know, there's so many accounts that aren't covering the basics. And again, you can apply as much ad tech as you want. If you don't get your ducks in line from the start, it doesn't matter. All you've got at the end of the day is a big, lumpy bill. I was asked. I think, I think it's about six, no, it would have been about a year ago now. So, it's, you know, are agencies is dying or is any any place in the future? Well, yeah, of course there is, you know. There's still pioneers of people with agencies. They're the ones telling us and instructing us in terms of how to manage, best manage our campaigns. Um, these are the people who are industry leaders. You know, we're here today and associated by an agency, you know. They see this as an opportunity to help influence others. So I've got a quote up here from Steve Combone from uh, Mediacom in North America, and uh, he's talking about his programmatic clients, um, and he's saying they're still pulling the levers, and a lot of their clients you know, are still keeping their best programmatic staff on as a retainer basis, which I found quite interesting, but it's definitely the way agencies I can see going in the future you know, as a consultative basis. And I'll use us at Pendragon as an example. Like I said, we've got a really, really well equipped team uh, to take our paid media advertising up to the next level, but we are currently looking at uh, agency partners at the moment for a consultancy sort of partnership. Um, and we certainly identify this as an opportunity for us. This second quote focuses solely on um, uh, inventory purchasing on a programmatic level. So what you can see there from Paul Gleb is he's head of programmatic at Bayer, the pharmaceutical businesses. It's really hard to prove a significant amount of value in an agency today in a programmatic biddable medium. That's a lot of bollocks. Um, basically, what he's saying is that his team of God knows how many people with an unlimited amount of resource can go and source primary, uh, premium deals with premium publishers at a better price than their agency can find. You know, that's all right for buyer, and that's what 0.1% of the businesses in the world are probably that size. What about everyone else? You know, we do need the support from agencies. We do need the tech that they've got to tap in and basically attract the premium at the rates that we can afford as businesses. So. I'm sorry, Paul, I have to disagree with that. It's not true. It's right if you're Nike, you're Adidas, you know, you're any one of the Unilever brands. It's not the case for everyone else. So it brings me on to, okay, 
what about using both teams? I've pretty much dismissed an in-house team. You can't have them on their own. And I've dismissed an HC. You can't have them on their own. Now, of course, that's not true. You know, both of those relationships do work for many businesses. But what if you wanted both? Like I said, we're in the process now of probably looking at that as our next step. Marv, can you have your cake and eat it? Yeah, we certainly can. Um, and there's so many different businesses who do have the, the dual relationship going on. So some of the best relationships I've seen and the performance has been resulted from this relationship, paired relationship, but like I say, if you get it wrong, make the wrong choices, some of the worst relationships I've also seen spawn from this uh, combination. So some considerations that you guys will need to make, especially if you're looking at investing in an agency and you already have an in-house team. It goes without saying this financial cost. Um, if you invest in, digital, in an in-house paid media team, which isn't necessarily too cheap, you know, you're looking to invest and overlay a fee for each on top of that, you know, your accountants, team, your finance experts are going to be thinking you've gone crazy, you're paying twice for the same thing. For those of you who are new to digital, I'm, I might be giving you some new information. For those of you who have already been in digital for quite a long time, you'll already be aware of this, but there's a hell of a lot of egos in this sector, um, which I find quite astonishing. But everyone's got an ego. And, and if you have two teams who have different ways of thinking, different processes of actually managing campaigns, you know, they can butt heads, they can clash. And although it's quite funny to start with, to see them arguing over the best way to run a campaign, it's not productive and it can be harmful. So you need to be careful that you have two sides of an argument consistently battering against each other, trying to get their own way in terms of managing a campaign. As a marketing manager, you've got to make decisions who to back and you've got to, you've got to handle that relationship. Actually, if you don't make the right choices, don't plan correctly, you could end up in a situation where you're duplicating the work. Um, when I was previously at Pendragon, so I was at Pendragon prior to moving to an agency, we had this scenario with Google, actually. Fortunately, we weren't paying for Google, but we instructed Google to carry out a set of actions for us to basically create campaigns. Uh, a couple of team members weren't aware of that, so they went and built them anyway. So after a couple of weeks, we found ourselves having a full suite of campaigns created. Looked pretty, looked great. They, did, they were created just the way we wanted to. And Google told us the next day they've done exactly the same thing. So I thought, oh, great. Which is OK, because we weren't paying for Google. Google were a partner of ours and still are. However, if we'd have paid an agency to do that, we would have found ourselves duplicating the work and paying for it twice. So you need to be careful. You need to instruct both parties. They need to be aware of what they need to do. They need to be harmonious. I'm a big believer in some good sweet spot with agencies. Agencies offer a huge amount of value as long as you use them correctly and definitely along the lines of your objectives. And main thing, are you a business that really needs an agency? So some of the considerations to get to the sweet spot are as follows, you know, the amount of ad hoc changes that you have to your campaigns. So Pendragon is a fantastic example of this. Unfortunately, we work in a sector where there are a lot of changes to our campaigns. You know, we work in a business that is consistently fluid. It is a frustration. It is a challenge, but it's something that we have to deal with, unfortunately. So when we look and think, if we want an agency to manage all of our PPC campaigns, our paid media campaigns, social campaigns, we will be paying a premium rate, a top, a top fee, effectively to have manual, boring, easy tasks to be carried out. We had this done previously, we employed, again, when I was previously at Pendragon, we used a really, really top agency in Leeds, actually, uh, and we found ourselves doing that. We were paying a premium for that manual tasks to be carried out. It wasn't profitable for us and it was not adding any value. At this point I made, you know, how I, how I see agencies made to be controversial, and I don't mean to talk down agencies, but I see them as, you know, them teddy bear grabbers, you get at the seaside. You know, if you put a pound in and have one go, you're probably not going to get the prize. The more money you put into it, the better your chance are getting the results that you want. Agencies work on a time basis. You know, yes, of course, they want to deliver the best results as possible. They want to showcase their skills to make sure you stay on as a client. But you've got to give them the money to allow them to do that. You've got to purchase the time from them. If you go and give them a, a poor amount of time and give them unrealistic objectives, firstly, a top agency will probably turn around and say, this isn't going to work for us, so we're going to walk away. Those who take it on do not expect the world from what you're going to give them. So make sure you budget for it. Know your agency team. Um, this happened quite a lot at our agency, uh, my DJ Fusa worked at, which was great to see. Now, our clients used to come in and make sure they got to know our team, you know. And I encourage anyone who goes with an agency, don't treat them as a, just a third party and you only respond to them on emails. Get to know them, get to understand them, how they think, how they work. Get them to understand your business. By knowing your team, it gives them the opportunity to start building trust between the two parties. And also it'll give you guys more confidence as to what they're delivering. I mentioned it first, consistent objectives. Um, I do my guys, Teams Edson, talking about objectives, prime objectives. Do not try and um, change the world, do not try and achieve everything all at once, because you're not going to be able to do it with what tools you've been given. You know, an agency will be exactly the same. 
So if you, are, you do not have consistent objectives, do you want to achieve everything with a, sub, uh, with a, a substandard budget? You know, an agency is probably not going to have to do it for you, but to be fair, neither is an in-house team. Ask yourself, do you need that level of expertise? Yes, agencies, generally speaking, have really, really top people uh, working for them. And they're available to you as a business to consult with. But, you know, are you happy with the level of uh, complexity of your paid media campaigns at the moment? Or is it delivering the results that you want? Yeah. If it is, then do you need another big lumpy bill at the top with an agency? So like I said at the start, I wasn't here to give you any answers. I wasn't here to say, OK, this is exactly what decision you should make. because. The decision effectively lies with you guys as business owners. Like I said, I've worked with a lot of businesses uh, in the past who have made the wrong decision. You know, they've had to reverse back, but have to build an in-house team, or they've had to go to an agency. And unfortunately, had to lay off people within their business. And it's, not only is it financially straining for the business, it's also emotionally straining when you make that mistake. Paid media is complex. You know, and those of you who work in paid media, you know, they will have better understanding than others. But um, Straight on. So, um, paid media is, is, a com is a complex beast. I say, if you get it wrong, because if you're in the power of making that decision, you, know, you make the wrong choice, the other ones are going to shoulder the blame because they're making the wrong choice. So, actually, take key considerations into mind. So, I'll go through them now. So, we've discussed various factors. What thing I think we can clearly say is that it's not a one hat fits all. What may, be, what may be the best solution for our glass isn't going to be the best solution for a one man band selling shoes, a market trader. What is the right solution for? Like, let's say, uh, Manchester, Air Group, uh, Manchester Airport Group, who uh, spoke to earlier, may not be the same for Nike or Adidas. You need to review um, your ad practices. Um, if the complexity of your ad practices are relatively shallow, you know, and they're achieving results, again, do you actually need that talent? You know, are you covering the basics well enough to actually invest into an agency or to invest in ad tech, etc.? Knowing your objectives, I won't labour on this point too much, but again, it's probably the most important factor you need to take into consideration. You know, you have a set amount of budget. You know, which option is financially viable for you? You know, investing in both uh, an in-house team and an agency may not be an option for you. You know, some of the top agencies who do charge a premium rate again may not be the right option for you either because you may not be able to afford their services. But do you really need their services? Do you need the technical offering? Do you need all these? Account directors, account managers, etc., 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 added to your account. Possibly not. If you're a small local agency with uh, an ample amount of experience, maybe the right solution for you. Are you well placed to recruit talent? And when I say well placed, I don't just mean the location. So we discussed about location of your business. So that's a challenge that unfortunately we can't necessarily do anything about. But if you're in charge of recruiting your paid media team, how about you? Are you well placed to recruit? Do you know what talent looks like? Do you know the skill sets? Have you got a recruitment team available to you who will understand paid media specialists? They're very different. I'll give you an example here. The two last recruits that I made when I was uh, at an agency, I'd historically always recruited marketeers, but paid media moved, the goalposts. It's more about mathematics now. So the last two uh, recruits I had was a physics graduate and a computer scientist. And they're probably two of the best recruits I've ever made. Uh, the marketeers were great, but you know these guys think a little bit differently. Are you well suited for an agency? You know, the ways you work, the actions that you carry out on a daily basis, the changes you need to make, you know, is an agency the best solution for you or is it an in-house team? Pendragon, again, is a perfect example. We are certainly suited for an in-house team, not necessarily agency for full-time management. And finally, if you are fortunate enough to have the budgets available to you to, in to basically appoint both an in-house team and an agency on a consultancy basis or some other capacity, then you know, is there a place for them? You know, if there is, you're probably going to get the best results. And like I say, if you do that, you need to make sure you're planning and, uh, your objectives set correctly. You need to make sure you've got the appropriate budget for both parties as well. I say no answers, but hopefully food for thought. And like I promise as well, I'm not going to overrun. Because it's the after party next, and like I say, that's where everyone's chomping a bit for. Uh, I will be around probably for around about half an hour after um, this talk. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to come and ask me. Uh, alternatively, you can contact me on the details below as well. Enjoy the rest of the day. So, thank you.